ओके सो वेलकम टू नीट 2025 रेस्पिरेटरी एंड एपीजी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द ओवर व्यू ऑफ द सेशन फॉर्चुनेटली द क्वेश्चंस वेर सिंपल एंड स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड more focus was on concepts rather than just memory it was more of concepts rather than memory and abg mostly basics and very important most of the questions were from dvt pyt previous year topics and previous year questions complemented by your notes now let us see the questions that i have come across in the last few days so come on students this i always tell in the class when there is an asthmatic Just a minute. Okay. So when there is an asthmatic and he is on some medication, so they have told solvitamol. It is Saba and ipratropium is Sama, but still patient is symptomatic. According to new guideline, now. reliever or rescue medication of choice let it be at any step what is the answer it is low dose inhaled corticosteroid with formatrol so once they say that this patient is having asthma the primary treatment of choice is combination what is this combination low dose inhaled corticosteroid with formatrol so out of this the best answer will be inhaled corticosteroids with laba why not other options right now saba alone is not recommended for treatment of asthma because asthma is not simple bronchospasm it is inflammation related so you have to bring that inflammation down so just increasing solvitamol will not be helpful theophylline it is again a bronchodilator it has no impact on inflammation but leukotriene antagonist yes it has impact on inflammation but this is not primary drug that brings down inflammation in asthma primary drug that brings down inflammation is inhaled corticosteroid and omalizumab is not used as a first line therapy here still patient has just started with initial phase of asthma so omalizumab once every option is over you are giving him some uh, moderate to high dose inhaled corticosteroids and you are giving him laba lama still not improving there you can consider omalizumab then there is a hospitalized patient receiving iv fluids he develops hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis which of the following fluids is most likely so whenever they say hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis it is nothing but your normal anion gap metabolic acidosis one point to know here is whenever they say hyperchloremic it means chloride is coming more into the body so whenever chloride comes into the body your body always loves chloride so it will take it up but your body also follows the rule of electron neutrality so if three negatives come in three negatives called as bicarbonate will be automatically lost so anything that adds chloride into the body excessively 
will cause loss of bicarbonate automatically and bicarbonate loss is metabolic acidosis because chloride has aggregated in the body the anion gap will not change and it will be a hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis now out of all this which contributes to pure chloride addition into your body you can obviously rule out five percent dextrose because there is no chloride now you are left out with is it ringer's lactate is it normal saline is it dns when compared to all this uh, chloride content is a higher in normal saline when compared to ringer lactate so out of ringer lactate or normal saline normal saline has a higher content so the possibility of metabolic acidosis is more if you give excess normal saline if you just give one or two body can easily fight but if you give excess it can go into metabolic acidosis then the question is sir why not dextrose with normal saline now in dextrose normal saline there is dextrose this dextrose will be metabolized by your body and that glucose later can be converted into carbon dioxide and water that water can dilute this saline and the effective chloride content is relatively less when compared to normal saline so out of all this the normal saline has more effective chloride content so it has more chances of causing metabolic acidosis then this is a straightforward question covid related ARDS I always tell in ARDS the primary treatment is lung protective ventilation that is low tidal volume so always you should select low tidal volume somebody has also mentioned that this is a severe ARDS PaO2 by FiO2 was less than 100 mm Hg it means this patient should also require PEEP. PEEP generally is given in most of the ARDS patients but once the PaO2 by FiO2 is very less this patient should be given high PEEP so that his alveoli will be sufficiently open to keep the gaseous exchange better. So the option containing low tidal volume and high PEEP this combination is warranted in the management of ARDS then this is again a straightforward question a 55 year old female acute respiratory distress post surgery so whenever they say post operatively patient is having acute shortness of breath hemoptysis and there is also increased respiratory rate tachycardia one possibility is always a pulmonary embolism see other things such as pneumothorax they also can happen but see the options if pneumothorax if you need to think you need to think of absent breaths on hyper resonant node and always see the options options is it delineating to one disease vq scan ct pulmonary angiography d dimer examiner he himself indirectly is saying this fellow is having possible pulmonary embolism and all these features are suggestive of high likelihood of pulmonary embolism and the key word here is how do you confirm for confirmation for confirmation anywhere it is ct pulmonary angiography if they ask you screening test maybe d dimer but here it is looking like high likelihood only there also you can directly go for ct pulmonary angiography confirm the diagnosis in pulmonary embolism only one option that is ct pulmonary angiography then hiv positive patient with two week history of fever cough weight loss he is diagnosed with tb always hiv tb co-infection this i routinely tell you in the class it is a double trouble you have to treat both but make sure when you are treating patient will not develop a problem called as iris immune reconstitution inflammatory syndrome so what happens is if you first start art consider uh, this patient is having both hiv and tb 
HIV in terms of low CD4 count, TB in terms of high bacillary load. Whenever you give first ART, uh, the drugs will damage the virus and suddenly your immune CD4 count will increase. So there is immune reconstitution. This reconstituted immunity will see this uh, TB bacilli and gives an extra inflammatory response. Because of that patients, uh, uh, lymph nodes will increase, fever can increase and patient may stop taking treatment. So if you give first ART, the immunity will reconstitute and it can cause inflammatory response making it uncomfortable to the patient. But same scenario now see, low CD4 count, how high TB bacilli. Now if you start ATT first, so the TB bacilli load is reduced. Now within two weeks to two months, if you start ART, even though the immunity is getting reconstituted, there is no sufficient inflammatory cell, I mean sufficient TB bacilli to give that inflammatory response. So in T, uh, TB, HIV, co-infection, always first you should start ATT. I again tell this, it is always the treatment, first treatment. So you have to start ATT then you can start ART two weeks after initiating ATT. Whereas simultaneously, usually then also you get these uh, interactions. ART after completing course of ATT, so not that much delay. Course of ATT, it means six months. All the damage would have been done. A start ATT after initiating ART, no. It is first ATT, then ART is a concept that you should be aware. Then again, there is a patient with TB, HIV, and now it is rifampicin resistant TB. So rifampicin resistant TB, MDR TB, the regimens are all the same. So we have discussed there are three regimens. One is all oral regimen, that is a longer regimen, 18 to 20 months. Then there is a shorter regimen, 9 to 11 months. The recent BPAL regimen, 6 months to 9 months. But the common point here is, if you see rifampicin resistant or MDR-TB, all will be bidaquiline-based regimens. Bidaquiline-based regimens. Without bidaquiline, we are not going to start a regimen for rifampicin resistant TB or MDR-TB. So these were the options given by students. If you don't have bidaquiline, that option does not qualify as treatment for MDR rifampicin resistant TB. Then out of this, I feel this is the better option, bidaquiline, pretominid, uh, moxifloxin, linezolid. And the side effect that you have here, obviously, if you don't space the regimens properly, there is always a chance of uh, immune reconstitution, inflammatory syndrome that I have discussed already. Then ABG question, I think ABG was scoring, somebody told me and there were about three to four ABG questions, all were simple. This was one that I could gather. So whenever you see any parameters, write down the key parameters in ABG, that is pH, PSEO2 bicarbonate, draw aromax, reduced, increased, increased. Anywhere decreased pH is acidosis, change in pH with respect to parameters, it is in opposite direction. So it is respiratory. Again, this is straight forward respiratory acidosis. Another question they have mentioned was anti IL-5 receptor blocker in asthma. So this is Bendralizumab, Lizumab. Then I got a recall they have asked you to calculate anion gap and it was a high anion gap metabolic acidosis. So overall, this is the recall that I could get from most of the students. And if you have any other questions, you can always contact me in my mail. And any other advice that you need in future also, you can, I'm always available for you. So thank you students. With this, I would like to conclude the session. I hope <coughs> everybody have done the exam good. Don't worry about the result. You have put in your extraordinary efforts. 
i think all your efforts will reflect as very good results see you on the other side okay dr rakesh bicarbonate 16 sodium chloride equaled some 30 okay So how much was the sodium and chloride? Bicarbonate was 16, sodium chloride equal to 30. Okay, then 30 you can take it. So for anion gap, it is straight forward forward uh, formula anion gap is equal to sodium minus chloride plus bicarbonate so anion gap you have to use this formula that's all minus chloride plus bicarbonate Okay then, take care students. See when there is metabolic acidosis, base excess will be negative. It means that much amount of base is less in the patient. So that much should be added to make it standardized ABG. So that is an extra value, you no need to take that into consideration. When there is metabolic acidosis, automatically base will not be excess, base will be less. Negative base excess is base deficit. So just go with the usual formula. See negative means base is less in the body that's why it is metabolic acidosis nope. i hope you got it just use the formula that is just an additional value that's all 